Let's do it. Let's head over to California. Dallas Cowboys against the Niners. Niners laying four here. Total is 46. Niners not playing great, but the Cowboys are decidedly ungreat so far this season. I say despite the absences at pass catcher and beyond, 26 to 20, the Niners, no faith in whoever's catching the passes um, necessarily for Brock Purdy, but I do still believe in Purdy to the degree that I say he goes over 250 pass yards in this one. That's even money for that. You know what? Let's have a little bit of fun. I saw a good joke, kind of dark joke, but the healthiest pass catcher among the San Francisco 49ers right now is the guy who got shot six weeks ago, Ricky Pearsall. Let's give him a touchdown at plus 165 on the other side of things. Dak is all they have, so he has to throw two touchdown passes in order them for this game to um, be close at all. I say he does it. Plus one tends your payout there. Hench, how say you? Well, this this if ever there was a game on the schedule that that reminds us what professional tackle football is all about, it's this game. Because in August and September, this was an NFC championship game preview. And mm. now it's will either of these teams make the playoffs? I mean, it is it, 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 between the mediocrity and the injuries. You you really you don't know what you're getting with either of these teams week to week. Um, I, you know, I thought I obviously I picked the the Lions to to trample the the Cowboys a couple of weeks ago, forty to seventeen, and I was conservative. That that score turned out to be worse. I also thought the Steelers would would trample the Cowboys. That ended up being wrong. Um, I do think the Niners will have enough of of the road grading running game to win this game. But I think Dak finds CD late to cover. I like Niners 2017. Okay. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I can't believe I'm picking them, but uh, I'm going to take the Dallas Cowboys with the points here. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to cover, uh, if not win this game. Uh, Sheck, you kind of alluded to with that Ricky Pearsall joke, uh, and good thing they drafted him because on the Wednesday, we're recording this Thursday, but the Wednesday uh, practice for the 49ers, Kittle, uh, Jawan Jennings, Debo Samuel all out. Uh, Jordan Mason also didn't practice. Obviously, we know that Brandon Ayuk out for the year. Um, Pearsall is back. That's just not like, even if those guys play, they're still banged up. They're not 100% right right here and and obviously this all stems back from the cmc kind of hidden injury we still don't really know why that went down the way it did uh, on the flip side dallas cowboys here it, it's kind of crumbling people are really taking shots at jerry jones lately that weird story about the tours during their practices like and and, and, and former players are coming out against the cowboys i think weirdly that chaos will kind of just like fire up those dudes that are still there and i just think just because of the, the nature of the niners and how banged up they are the cowboys find a way to cover this game yeah, circle the wagons or fall completely apart. It's going to be interesting to see which way America's have, alleged you know, team goes have, here. They have tweaked those tours a little bit in that when they're when they're walking through the facility, they've started asking the fans if any of them can tackle. I didn't know it had gotten that bleak, but yeah. all right, yes. And Jerry Jones, here's the new the new shade that uh, has been delivered to Pro Football 2024. Owners and big time players admonishing the fans. I know that the media that's that's old hat at this point for from Aaron Rodgers, but now the now the fans aren't sufficiently supportive. All weird stuff. Jerry Jones getting after his local radio crew. Let's mm -hmm. uh, let's stay in the NFC East with Eddie Spaghetti's favorite team, the Gigantics, paying a visit to the banks of the Three Rivers on Monday night at the time of this recording. Steelers laying six and a half total, thirty six and a half. Russell Wilson, not enough to uh, drag that number into a more optimistic offensive category here. You know what? I'm going to stay the course here. The Steelers are still the Steelers. I know that they've put 30 uh, on the scoreboard two weeks in a row. Steelers win it 14 to 11. I think the number's inflated here because the Giants only scored three against Philly. Um, I do have to say, because you know who... Uh, I learned at the knee of the late great Jerry Orbach. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. And Russell was good. It's been a little overstated how good he was. But listen, can't uh, can't argue with the results. I think the decisive moment for me, it wasn't the deep shot to George Pickens. It's a good thing Pickens got that one because, boy, Russ was on the ropes there. But I do think he was nails to bounce back. Consider that the home crowd was booing him. They were chanting for the other guy to get put back in there. And within that same first half, he overcame that 
and Aaron Rodgers didn't, and that really swung the result and maybe the season for both teams there with the help of Beanie, Beanie Bishop's big pick at the back end of the first half there. Um, I think Rodgers is the ongoing issue at this point. I mean, he's got to be clean and carry the team, and he's doing something less than that. Um, Jalen Warren finally looked like himself for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's a big thing for that team. He's going to get a touchdown this week. Plus 245 is your payout. You could talk me into a Pickens touchdown as well. I do think Russ is going to lean on that quite a bit. Plus 140 there. The New York Giants end the first half with a field goal attempt. The payout there, it's a fun bet. Plus 450, the Steelers all season long have on opening drives let other teams go down the field on them. On the first possession, I don't know why this would be any different here. Hench, I'll say you. Well, it's, you know, I I like this Giants defense, but you could see it getting demoralized in real time by the offense, right? You know, you can't, you 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 can't be like, really? Are we back up already? I just sat down. I haven't, I haven't finished my Gatorade. Like, like the Giants offense is so inept and they can't hold the ball. They obviously can't score touchdowns. So even though I, I think that Giants defensive unit is solid, I feel like this is another week where it's like Giants are, I mean, the Giants got held to three points by what I think is not a very good defense mm -hmm. in the Eagles, but they're playing a very good defense this week. So I don't see how this stays in, in single digits. Um, I do think Russ, Russ's line could have been a lot of different without a couple of pick, you know, jump balls that, that Pickens puts in his plus column. But um, I think, you know, this is kind of a mismatch between that Steelers defense and that Giants offense. Steelers 27, Giants 13. Spaghetti. The yeah. Gents. They got a <laughs> shot, man. I know no, it's crazy. Don't. I know they got ham. Uh, maybe they don't, but the the division front runners ain't any great shakes themselves. Go ahead. No, no, I mean that's the the beauty of it, I I guess. Uh we're at the stage now of the Giants season where it's like how what does Brian Dable have to do to keep his job? And I, I think a uh, part of that is that looking towards to like to bench Daniel Jones. Now I know they're on the road. He plays better on the road, strangely, because most quarterbacks do not play better on the road, but he does. Um but it's a prime time game. The Giants are absolutely miserable in prime time the last decade or so. This kind of reminds me of like those Rangers teams with Henrik was when he would drag the Rangers to the playoffs and their best like offensive player was Ryan Callahan. That's kind of what Dexter Lawrence is right now with this current uh, Giants roster. Um, I, I just think, you know, Hench said it too, this is a huge mismatch with the Steelers' great defense and Daniel Jones running this offense. And, uh, you know, Deontay Banks was quitting on the team. I even think the Steelers' offense is going to look great in this game. Uh, I know it's a kind of big number, six and a half, but the Steelers are going to clear that no problem whatsoever. This game's going to be over by the halftime. I don't know. Boy, I think that one, that comment by spaghetti is going to be knocking around between my ears in the second half like no problem covering six and a half these are the Steelers they don't blow out anybody certainly not bum teams go through the history of Mike Tomlin these are the games that his teams tend to struggle in moving on Bills Seahawks the home team plus three here up in Seattle total is 47 man this is a hard team week to week to figure out the Seahawks uh, when I am on board with them, they tend to to fail and vice versa. I say they win this one straight up, 29-27. Hawks can still win this division. We're talking about the Niners and where they are. The Rams are talking about uh, moving Cooper Cup. At the time of this recording, we'll see how the Thursday night game impacts that. DK Metcalf with a chance to play. Um, the defense though, the bigger story there for Mike McDonald is mostly healthy. Now, Geno Smith over 250 yards, even money there. A James Cook touchdown pays out the same hench. How say you? I'm in your garage check. I think, I think the Seahawks, I think we're maybe going to start to see the real Seahawks. They've been so banged up, starting to get some bodies back. I think they have nice balance on offense. And, uh, and I think this bills team is flawed. You know, they're, they're, they obviously have. Uh, uh, you know, one of the one of the legit MVP candidates in their QB, but man, they they were they rely on him a lot. And I think the Seahawks get this outright 24 23. You know, I know we've touched on it already, but again, let's answer this where we are MVP for in terms of value. If you replaced every high end quarterback with a league average guy, I think the Bills are the ones that plummet the furthest. I know that this is in the age of Mahomes and Dak Prescott, what he's doing. 
um, to, to make the Cowboys relevant and so on and so forth. But I really, I mean, Lamar is having the MVP season, I think, mm-hmm. based on, um, you know, how these things are voted on. But I think Josh Allen is the one that obscures the most flaws with his team. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? I totally agree with that. And that's why I'm taking the Bills here to to cover lane three. Uh, they got to, you know, the Seahawks are surprisingly, I mean, passing wise, like one of the best teams in the NFL in terms of passing offense. Um, but they're, are they an elite team? No. Are they a bad team? Obviously, you know, not. But they're right in that middle level. This is a team that the Bills should have to be because they have a guy like Josh Allen playing uh, quarterback who, if you did replace him, even with other high end quarterbacks, I just don't think the way the Bills operate, they could just sustain the way that Allen does it. He keeps them in every game. And I think it's going to happen again plus getting Amari Cooper just getting another warm body on their veteran receiver to help him um, even with the rushing offense has been okay I, I think it's a huge move we'll see the rest of the way so uh, it's a really tough place to play in Seattle but I just think Josh Allen inside that red zone he just gets it done they're gonna find a way to win yeah I wonder moving on to the Buccaneers if they're in the market for I mean there are very few guys uh, left now again Cooper Cup being one of them. I don't think that's a move they make, but boy, they got wrecked because of Chris Godwin and also up 10 with a chance to uh, go up 17 to seven on the Ravens. Bake throws that pick and the rest is history there. Um, Now the Atlanta Falcons are paying a visit to one of the two places in the Tampa Bay area. The Buccaneers plus two and a half because of the devastating injuries. 46 is the total. I think the Falcons, my Falcons, Still my pick to be your number one seed in the NFC, but it's getting late a little bit for that. Need a win here. 26-21 Atlanta gets it. And uh, what I didn't get was a victory last week because of that aforementioned Monday night result. Get this, Eddie Spaghetti. Hench is already aware. In my fantasy league, the cool cats hide Tony Barbieri um, and Kyle Bowers' team 114.65. To 114.65. What the hell? That's wow. crazy stuff, Hench. By the way, offense uh, now going to run through for Tampa through Rashad White and Bucky Irving. That's mm. not a terrible thing. Both can catch passes as well. Rashad White t- touchdown pays out plus 140. A Bucky Irving touchdown pays out plus 160. If you want to parlay, both of them getting one. Six to one is your payout there. Hench, I'll say you. Well, it's funny. Uh, first of all, I it's incomprehensible that a fantasy league that goes out to the hundredths could ever have a tie. And I promise you, if you went back through the game film, one of you guys had a yard that you didn't deserve. (laughs) Like there's no way that it's actually a tie. One, one of you guys won that game, but, uh, but, but speaking of luck, okay. Falcons are not very good on defense and they're not very good on offense, but they are lucky. They are lucky. Hmm. Aquan Barkley drops a sitter i mean that every one of our kids could have caught that pass that saquon barkley dropped against the falcons that should have been a loss for the falcons then they beat the saints on on a late field goal from from a bazillion yards in a game where they scored on their own punt they scored and on a crazy ricochet deflection that ended up in a pick six they beat the saints those should both have been losses completely outplayed now they go to Tampa Bay. Oh man, how are you gonna how are you gonna game plan for Evans and Godwin? We're not, we're not, we're the Falcons. We're the we're the luckiest team in football. So I'm in your garage. I think the lucky Falcons win it 27-23. Although hat tip to Baker Mayfield, mm-hmm. uh, who is on that list of guys where their team would fall apart if he wasn't there, because they still move the ball after Evans got hurt. Uh, I didn't know the names of the guys he was throwing to. Uh, Kate Otten looked like a pro bowler. Um, so uh, I, I wouldn't give up on the Bucks, but the Falcons win this one and cover. Boy, if you're vain, do not speak during a game because when it was 10 nothing, I tweeted out to the world, Baker Mayfield for MVP. How come no one's talking about this yet? Tweeted out the uh, odds and everything else. Probably as Lamar Jackson was running it into the end zone to give the Ravens the lead that they wouldn't lose. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I'm going to take the Falcons to to win and cover in this game. Uh, I you know I do agree with Hench that they're the offense and defense not looking great. He's trying the ball for the Falcons, but at least on offense they do have the guys. I do think that Bijan is a great player when he has the ball. You know, you can say what you want about Drake London and Kyle Pitts, but at least they have the pedigree. And I think if they kind of start clicking, uh, they're going to score some points. Whereas the reverse side of this game. 
I don't, I know that everyone's in the NFL. Like you make the roster, you're a good player, obviously, but it's like losing Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Mike Evans, we talked about week in, week out, had the most underrated like careers recently, uh, uh, clearly a Hall of Famer. And Chris Godwin was leading the NFL in receptions. I, I don't think you could just get over that. And Todd Bowles saying they're not really going to actively look to add anyone else. I think that's a mistake. I think Baker was playing really well because of those guys. I do agree that Bucky Irvin, the fresh legs, uh, I do have him in fantasy. I think he's probably going to overtake Rashad White. He will be the main guy. Uh, you know, the rest of the way here. And I think that, you know, he'll help the team as much as he can. But losing those two big receivers was a huge, huge problem for the Buccaneers. And it's a shame because they're going to have a good season. So Falcons win this game and cover. Uh, listen, I think Liam Cohen has a chance of being clever enough to deploy both of those runners on the field at the same time to, to create a little uh, confusion for the defense. Meantime, most interesting game of the week by my measure Philadelphia Eagles, Cincinnati Bungles, uh, the Bungles laying two in the Queen City. Total is 48 at the time of this recording. I'm going to stick. I know I hear you, Hench. You say it every week. I'm sticking with what I said in the preseason, and you saw some signs of it last Sunday. Eagles defense is going to get better as the year goes along. Its problem is, is that it's young collectively. They'll figure it out, like I say, um, over the course of the next uh, half season here. Um, Joe Cool, though, is a major upgrade from Danny Dimes. I'm with the book here, leaning ever so slightly to the Bungles, 33 to 30 in an entertaining one. Saquon, pretty dependable, pretty dependable. This was a big swing and a miss by me. I didn't know what how big a factor he could be with Philly and the way they typically approach things. 80 plus rush yards pays out at plus at minus 105, but if you want to live. And take him up over 100 yards, your payout there, juicy, at plus 220. Joe Burrow, here's your fun spaghetti rush bet of the week. If he goes over 25 rush yards, that pays out at plus 220. Mm. Fun. Hench, how say you? In the exact same garage, Bengals 27, Eagles 24. Three-point win for for the Bengals. Um, The Eagles with A.J. Brown have been excellent. That, that, that's really the story of two seasons, you know, and when, when he was hurt, they were not very good. Uh, and that just has such a ripple effect. Obviously Saquon's a lot better when AJ Brown's out there. If the defense can play with a lead, the defense is better. So like age as, as goes AJ Brown, so go the Eagles. That said, the Bengals defense is good. Like that, the, you know, Joe Burrow's Joe Burrow's excellent, but the defense is really starting to get after it. So I think this is, you know, I, I did bet the Bengals under 10 and a half wins. I'm, I'm, I think I'm, that's going to cash, but, uh, but 10 is not out of the question. And I think this is a really, this is the game of the week between two playoff teams. Uh, and I think the Bengals get it. Mm-hmm. I hear you, but if you lose it, especially if you're Cincy, you know, they've been digging themselves out of the hole a little bit here, but you know, you're, you're getting to the halfway point in the season here. How far, how far back, they can fall and still have a shot at the division or even a wild card. It's getting a little sketchy. Spaghetti. Yeah, if this game maybe was in Philly, I would think a little bit differently about it. But I think because since he is home, I, I do like them to win and cover this game. I also think the difference in these teams, the Eagles are very inconsistent. I think the Bengals are just weirdly slow starters. I, I also think, too, that the Bengals know if they stop Saquon or at least limit Saquon, there's an easier path to victory. I, I just don't see Jalen Hurts has not really proven to me or anyone this year that he can go shot for shot with Joe Burrow to kind of win this game. He's not the same player he was a few seasons back. So if they slow down Saquon a little bit, I, I think Joe Burrow – has the path to victory here in this game should be a fun one but I, I do think the Bengals will win and cover all right moving on Colts Texans big one in the AFC South Texans laying five total is 46 I say the Texans win it 27 17 Houston hasn't lost at home yet this year they have won their last two against the Colts you know I pay attention to the mini air results between two teams going head to head like that Joe Mixon's rolling. Jonathan Stewart still with the high ankle. Maybe he plays. Maybe he doesn't. He's not going to be 100% either way. Mixon goes over 76 and a half rush yards. Anthony Richardson not playing very well, but his strength, he gets a rushing touchdown. The payout there is two to one. Hench, how say you? Jonathan Taylor? What did I say? <laughs> Jay Jonathan Stew. Stewart. That's oh, Jonathan, Jonathan Stewart. Stewart a Oregon Carolina, Duck, Carolina Panther legend. Carolina yeah, right. Panther. Or Daily Show, once I a week host, the, I, either he way. He might be the Carolina Panthers all-time leading rusher, Jonathan Stewart. So he's not I think gonna... the Daily Show guy is playing wide receiver for the Niners. On uh, so, so wait, what did you, what was your final? 
in this game? I don't remember. 24-17 uh, Texans. Oh, you say they cover. Okay. I, I also have them at 24 points, but I don't have them covering. I've been winning 24-21. You know, what are the, like, over the last 10 years, I mean, when, when we started doing fantasy football, it's like you needed those two running backs. Like, he's running back. It was all, there was always a scarcity, and you got to get your running backs. And and more and more, and 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 your t- your teams like you're like dr- draft those big high end receivers because they're a lot less likely to get hurt than running backs. This year, the opposite is true. Nico Collins, Mike Evans, and AJ Brown probably are all in the top five in points per game. They've all had hamstring injuries. Obviously, Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup both went down. Mm. Ayuk's out for the season. Like, it is a bloodbath among mm. wide receivers. And good Lord, the C.J. Stroud miss Nico Collins. I mean, what, what did he throw for, 81 yards in Green Bay? Like, it was it was a shocking number. And uh, and so I don't think they're going to be able to put enough daylight between them and a, and, a, and a mediocre Colts team to cover that that number. I think they win – but I don't think they're blowing teams out until Nico Collins comes back. Yeah, I hear you. But the the splits are pretty severe home and road for mm-hmm. for Stroud. Uh, Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, that's basically I'm taking the Texans here uh, to win and to cover just because they're they're home and they have to play well against the Colts. And I was just talking about consistency uh, with Jalen Hurts. And, you know, we, we don't really see that with Anthony Richardson. Like, I wasn't in love with him coming into the, the draft just because he had a lot of raw tools, but his game wasn't really, like, really refined. And we see him either getting injured and he wows us with his big arm, but he just has not been consistent. They have to kind of figure out what they're, you know, what they're going to do with the quarterback position, especially when you go and see, like, backups like Joe Flacco playing uh, extremely well here. So, uh, the Colts, you know, the the loss of Nico Collins hurts, but they said about last week, but they have the depth. Um, they're going to win this game at home and cover. Uh, moving on, uh, the Devontae party was delayed by Rodgers' two interceptions. The pack, I, I, I was thinking about that uh, yesterday. Can you imagine how hard the Packers are laughing right now? I mean, they must they must just be delighted at the well. Then they just uh, then they just add Bob (laughs) Sala. Bob (laughs) Sala, just in case, (laughs) just in case you weren't clear if they're having a laugh about how everything's going here. They brought uh, Sala in to tune up the defense a little bit. Jets at the Patriots. Oh, what an opportunity for the Jets to get right against really. Maybe the AFC's worst team here. The Patriots are plus seven. The total is 41. Seven's a big number. Drake May is a wild card. I get it. Potential for a real home field disadvantage for the Jets here if things get sideways early on. Thank goodness it's the Pats that they get to play here. I say the Jets get it 30 to 19. Hench, how say you? Oh my God, our, our garages are so adjacent. Uh, um, mm. I say Jets thirty to sixteen. Um, ah. You know, if if they'd said to the Jets, they go, "Look, you know, for better or worse, you're you're kind of the you're the story of the season. This this Jets melodrama. So we don't want you to be eliminated from playoff contention before December. So in a in a rare move." Uh, after a, a devastating loss where the Steelers ran off 31 straight points against you, we're going to let you pick your opponent next week. Or this coming week, you can pick your opponent. It's like, oh, oh, we'll play the Patriots. Can we please, you know, can we please have the Patriots? I mean, it's it's insane. And as the, of course, you know, as the Steelers were just trampling the Jets, it was so delightful, it was so fun. Um, you're like, oh my God, this thing's gone sideways. Who are they going to lose to next week? And they're like, oh. Never mind. They're they're playing the Toledo Mud Hens. Like you said, like maybe the worst team in the AFC. There's not another nominee. There's no one close. There. I mean, they they just played one of the, the team other in Northeast teams. Ohio that uh, might quibble with that. There, there's that's true, but they have they have more excuses. Um, you know, so the, the the Patriots are are soft as as their own coach called them. They they've just you know. They got run over by both the Jaguars uh, and the Texans the previous week. They just can't, they can't stop anything. Drake may very promising mm-hmm. running for his life, but looking good while doing it. Uh, but, but man, uh, th- they're so bad. Uh, and it's, it's just a, it's just a nice gentle get right game for the jets. Um, you know, where Rogers gets to take out all his new toys for a spin. Uh, and then on a short week, the jets, get the Texans, which will be a little more interesting following this blowout against the Patriots. 
you may notice I didn't give any props here. I'm having a tough, I don't know what to play on the Patriots side, except negativity. And um, with the Jets offense, it's interesting to consider, like, it's easy to say, oh, you, well, you know, Rogers, I, I said, you know, the Devante party was delayed by at least a week there. So I, the inclination to feed his best pal there and get a couple of touchdowns. I don't think that's where Rogers head is now. He has to show like, this is about where this jets team can go. That says Garrett Wilson to me that says feeding Brees hall a lot this week. It's a little murky for me. Uh, Spaghetti. How say you? Yeah. Well, I'll start with the positive uh, here for, for Hench and the, the Patriots. I mean, a couple of throws that Drake may a couple of plays that Drake may has made um, it, it to me, obviously it's exactly why the giants we saw in the hard knocks wanted to, you know, go to the Patriots and trade up and get him. So I think at least you have your quarterback of the future, which is uh, definitely good, but I think all the, the praise probably ends there. I think the jets will win this game. Uh, I think by two or three scores, I think this, they're going to take a lot of their frustration out. Uh, I'm kind of like one foot off the jets bandwagon and the Rogers bandwagon. I'm not going to blame Rogers for, I mean, he's playing very, very sloppy, but I think it's kind of understated how bad the defense has been in a lot of games this year. They have not been the same Jets defense. Uh, I think a lot of Rodgers uh, interceptions, a lot of like one of the game and, and the, the Steelers game was a tip ball. Uh, they're, Lazard and, and the like have dropped a lot of passes and Brees Hall has been inconsistent up until recently. So I think there's a lot of things going wrong uh, with the Jets, but I, I think this is an easy game for them to kind of get right, like Ken said, before their uh, bigger matchup versus Texans. So they'll win this game and, you know, with the home crowd but um it's it's not great times right now in east rutherford by the way just very quickly i don't want to quibble about uh reality with uh with aaron but um the idea like we we, we still have time to get back into this thing yeah kind of you do but they're three back of the broncos who they lost to head to head and the broncos ain't in a playoff spot right now so that's kind of grim and on some level, maybe their be better shot is to catch the Bills. The problem is they already have lost a game to the Bills. So by definition, they would have to beat the Bills to even have a shot at getting the East. It's it's getting dark there. Meantime, like I say, the pack is laughing and on a nice little roll three in a row now. Jags back from Europe after beating the Patriot. I don't know if I if we if we as a nation should be upset about this. The the, the team in Turquoise went and beat the Patriots in front of England. Sends a weird mixed message. Either way, the Jags are plus four in this one. The total is 49. I feel like the Jags offense at least shows up uh, frisky. The pack wins it, though, 34-21. Everyone, including Drake May, is throwing it on the Jags this season. Mm -hmm. Jaden Reed benefits this time, 60-plus receiving yards, plus 105 is your payout. Hench, how say you? Um, You know, I'm not, you know, Spaghetti and I are not, we're, we're not, able to retract our our Jags playoff pick but they they don't look like the abomination that they looked like for the first month of the season they are moving the ball uh Trevor Lawrence hasn't looked like a complete bust Tank Bigsby is a nice running back I think they keep this one close I think the Packers win 28 27 but uh but uh, but a late score for the backdoor cover for the Jags spaghetti yeah, I, I want to. I do want to forget the Jaguars pick here, and and yeah, Brian Thomas also had a nice game too. Their offense looks a little bit better. That being said, uh, I picked the Packers to win the NFC North, and I said that Jordan Love was going to be in the MVP conversation. So I'm going to stick with that. He's finally back healthy, or at least as healthy as he could be post injury. And I think this is a game you cannot slip up. I mean, only laying four points, you have to cover that. Uh, I think they're going to win this game by at least a touchdown. And we brought up the stat. I did it last week. Deshaun Watson, the only quarterback in the NFL that does not has not died dominated this Jaguars passing defense. I mean, this game is re really being served up on a silver platter for Jordan Love. Um, so Packers have to take advantage of that, and they got to win this game big.